All right, we're here with Caro Parisian. Uh, Caro, uh, today is May 6th. You have a fight coming up on the 19th, which is 13 days from now. How you feeling? How you been preparing for the fight? And what's going on, basically? Because it's been a while since, uh, you know, since your last fight, and you know, everybody wants to know. Yes, and we're back to square one again. <sighs> last time I said certain stuff. Oh, I'm this and that. I want to make my comeback, I want to do this, I want to do that. Obviously nothing ever happened. You know, I, f I was fighting demons for about three years. A lot of bad stuff, a lot of bad stuff in my personal life. And these demons are the ones that don't leave you alone. So for about three years I struggled with a lot of stuff, you know, personal issues. And, you know, thank God I'm overcoming all those stuff. So are the demons behind you now? Yeah, sort of. I'm looking back, they still want to wave at me, I'm flipping them off, so... Um, at the time being, I'm training. Uh, I look healthier. I'm healthier. Uh, training today, I wasn't too happy with my performance in training today. We wrestled a little bit, but I still got one more hard week to go. Uh, not saying that you know, not happy, meaning that I got you know, pushed around and stuff. No, I still threw guys. I still threw the best guys and stuff. But when I walk in there, I want to be. I want to walk in and like I used to walk into anywhere and feel like I'm the man. If you're gonna clinch with me, you're gonna. You're gonna Go for a roller coaster ride, and I, I'm not feeling that exact confidence. So uh, we'll get that back soon, within the next week. And I've been training, running, sparring a little bit. Obviously, hands, feet, conditioning, etc., etc. Whatever it takes to win this coming fight, May 19th. Let me ask you this: You mentioned that you're back to square one again, which means you've been through this road, down this road before. This is your second journey again, basically trying to come back up and going through all the processes. With everything that's happened to you, what is it that you've learned that's the most important for you to make sure this second time around, you know, you're going to be able to, to get to where you want and maybe hopefully not make some of the, uh, you know, fall into the pitfalls you had fallen into before? What's, I'm sure that's always got to be in the back of your mind. And, and mentally, what are you doing to be prepared for that? But preparation is... There's no specific preparation for stuff like that. I mean, you sit there and you look at your life and you look, okay, what am I doing? Where I was, where I'm at, where I want to be. You know, you kind of break your life down. You're like, dude, I got so much more to offer, you know? You get all these fan mails about fans saying stuff that gets back in my hair stand up, you know, about all these good stuff and stuff. And you're like, dude, you know what? You're not just fighting for yourself. Right now, all I care about is about myself, my health, my fighting, and me, me, me. Because all my life, I've worried about everybody else. This person, that person, oh, he doesn't like me, why doesn't he like me, blah, blah, blah. And this stuff has always bothered me, but right now, you know, I just want to care about myself. So because you're, I've been to hell and back. You know, and so I'm on the way you're back. saying you're much more focused now? Much, for, much more focused. Um, uh, realizing what my problems were, trying to get rid of my problems, got rid of my problems, almost 80% of the problems that I had, uh, you know, this is life, you're always going to have problems, but don't make it a problem where it's going to cost your destiny, where it's going to be, be kind of like that problem that's going to end a career or a life, you know, stay away from those problems, other problems here and there, chicks, broads, wife, whatever you do, those problems can always be worked out, but problems that, you know, when you're straight on against a bullet and stuff and you got to figure out which way to go, you, you want to stay away from those problems, and that's what I'm trying to do. The time being, that's about it. Carl, I'm going to ask you a question straight up. Uh, we, you and I have been friends for a while, and yeah. this is, you know, I do a lot of reading on the blogs, on the posts, on the internet. Basically, I'm going to come straight out and just ask you, are you done with the drugs? From what everybody drugs. was saying, the uh, prescription medication. First and foremost, the funny thing is people thought I was actually addicted to pain medications which I wasn't. Even people say, I, oh, he was addic addicted to pain meds, he was doing this. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, I took pain medications for, for my injuries to my torn hamstring, whether it was my sciatic nerve, whatever it was. But when you take this stuff, you understand, when you take these medications, these are narcotics, eventually your body starts getting immune to them, and then after a while, like, Jesus Christ, I feel kind of crappy because I have pain and I don't have my medication. What am I going to do, you know? And that's what you think. And uh, 
you know, I don't have that problem. People thought I actually had the problem. Listen, it might have seemed that way that I was taking pain medications and it's all about pain medications. It was not. It wasn't. Pain medications cause a lot of stuff, I'll tell you that. Pain medications cause anxiety, I'll tell you that. I'll say it on TV. Well, speaking of anxiety, how are you dealing with that now? I'm fine. I don't have anxiety. I feel fine. I've been in Vegas for a week training before I used to force myself to go and get in bed to sleep before and just count the days when am I going to get home. Now I just go chill out, relax, train, etc., etc. You know, I'm, I'm training, I'm fighting, everything's, everything's fine. I got a fight coming up and, uh, you know, it is what it is. At the time being, like I said, man, the blogs can say whatever they want. You know, it's very easy when you have a significant, little bit of name, but that much of a name, it's going to come out. And people are either going to talk crap about you or they're going to, you know, hype you up. I got the haters, I got the lovers. I'm never going to make everybody love me. And people will take one little thing the hamburger patty and by the time it's done they'll make it into the whole cow you know that's what people do and that's what they did to me one pain one pain medication they made into a hundred pain medications well I'm glad we got that on the record I just because like I said there was a lot of stuff that was out there and I just wanted to the whole world basically to kind of hear your side of the story yeah because uh, oftentimes that's that's ignored it's what people's perceptions are of, of how they seem to see things mm -hmm. now Getting back to your fight, do you know much about your opponent and do you have a game plan prepared or how are you entering this particular uh, fight? I've, I have I met this guy in Canada. Uh, his name is Ryan Ford. Big, big black guy, strong. I thought it was a light heavyweight. Met him. Uh, that was about it. And then uh, they offered about 10, 12 guys in Canada to fight me. No one took the fight. He was the only guy that took the fight. And I said, wow, that guy's a seven year. I said, great, no problem. I'd love to fight him. So we signed a deal. I, I thank him for taking the fight, you know, and uh, whatever the fight goes, I just want to go in there and show people that I'm back fighting, I'm back performing. You know, it's not that car that, oh, look at him, he doesn't look right, he doesn't do this. I want people to say, dude, he's back, he's fighting. God forbid I get hit by lightning and something happens during this fight where it doesn't go my way. I still want people to say, dude, but he's not that Carl that we saw in the Holman fight or Dong Gyeong Kim fight. This is the car that we, we, we saw fighting Diaz and Sarah and Lytle. This is that Carl, you know? Or he's on the way to becoming that Carl or better. You know, I want people to get their money worth, you know? Sure. So that's what I'm trying to do. With my last question, Carl, let me ask you this. You talked about a lot about how you want other people to see you and how you want, how you want to prove yourself to the others. Is there anything that you want to prove to yourself? after everything you've been through? Oh, man. I told you I wasn't going to hold back, man. I was going to ask you the tough question. No, 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 no. It's not tough. It's just a question that I can say so, so much about, you know. But I'm trying to put all that into a few sentences. First and foremost, I want to do it for myself. I want to get my confidence up there. When I used to walk on the mat, I used to feel like the man. When I used to walk into a cage, I used to feel like the man. Whether I'd be nervous or scared of, of anything, never by my opponents, about losing, I always felt like I had enough to do something. I was always confident. You know, and this confidence went away. That's why it, it got me to this point where when I'm taking the steps for a fight or anything, like I said, the smallest things be become the biggest things. That hamburger patty becomes the whole cow. And all of a sudden, you're like, Jesus Christ, this and this, and next thing you're pulling out of fights. It's not my style. I used to do a workout before fights just to impress the guys around me, and then walk in a cage and fight two fights the same day. You know, when we were kids, this is what we've done. And all of a sudden, I mean, no disrespect to all the fighters these days, I, you know, I respect each and every one of them that walk in the cage, and all these guys are winning and this and that, and then looking at me like, ah, oh, yeah, I, ha, what? I, I doubt it, but maybe has been or this and that. He's washed up, dude. You know, I'm I'm almost 20. I'm like 29 years old. I got like at least five more years to get out there and bang. You know, I have so much more technique, so much crazy stuff to prove. I'm in a deep hole. I'm crawling out, but I know that I'm gonna be crawling out because I see uh, something, a sky, a light somewhere up top that, and I'm gonna crawl out eventually and. 
hurt people, you know, and I come and train, I've been training, I've been training, you know, whether I get taken down, or I get punched, whatever I'm doing, I'm still training and training, and, you know, I got that ego in practice, no, I'm not going to lose it even in practice, I'm, I'm still going to beat people in practice, so next Friday I'm going to come out here, and I'm going to try to destroy these guys even more, you know, dump them on their head, so they'll know who they're clinching with and all that stuff. But all that being said, man, all I'm trying to do is make my comeback. You know, it's enough is enough. You know, I hit rock bottom. Anything below that is it's in the casket, and I cannot, I can't, I can't go down that much. So I'm back. I'm training. Thank God. You know, like I said, if even if it doesn't go my way, God forbid. You know, I can still tell you I'm back. I'm training. I fought my demons. You know, people tell me I look better. People, I spar people. They're like, dude, it's like a day and night difference. The way we we spar, the way you look. You look amazing, you know, and I'm trying to push it more and more, at least get to what I used to be, and then we'll think about getting higher than that, because I've had title shots before, you know? Right. Well, Carl, listen, man, I appreciate the time. Thank you very much. want to wish you luck in Canada on the 19th. Thank you. And I want to talk to you after your fight, man. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hopefully with a victory. Thanks a lot. Definitely. Thank you, Carl. High fighters.